Derelia with Engine Power Source and welcome to this edition of EPS Shop Talks. Today we're going to be talking about our latest innovative solutions for engine powered equipment, our Tier 4 20 and 30 kW gensets. These gensets are offered in both an open and an enclosed version for a variety of mobile applications. And now let's spend some time talking about some key things you need to keep in mind when installing these gensets. When your generator first arrives, one of the first things you should do is review the manuals that are affixed to the front of the radiator. These manuals not only describe how to operate the genset and the maintenance schedule for it, but also some very specific installation steps that need to be followed for proper installation. One of the main considerations when installing a new genset is to make sure that there's proper airflow. There needs to be adequate cooling air for both the generator end and the engine. That cooling air is removed by the fan in the radiator and the hot air out of the radiator needs to be directed away from the genset and not allowed to recirculate. Improper cooling air flow can reduce generator performance and also lead to component failure. So you wanna make sure you consider that as part of your installation process. The next thing we'd like to talk about is our quick start guide. This guide is included with each Tier 4 generator set that we ship and points out several very specific installation instructions that need to be followed for proper installation. The genset should always have its own dedicated fuel lines to and from the fuel tank. Keep in mind that if you're using more than one generator in your application, each one of them should have their own separate lines. Once you've finished connecting your fuel lines, you need to also bleed all of the air out of the fuel system. There's a very specific process for doing this that is outlined on page 26 of the installation manual. And you should also check out our video library for a demonstration of this process. For electrical power, a dedicated battery and properly sized battery cables should be used for reliable starting and operation. The information about batteries and cable sizes for these models can be found on page 18 of the installation and maintenance manual. And finally, since these engines are controlled by an ECU, there is a special battery home run circuit that must be installed between the wiring harness and the battery itself. This is crucial to eliminate voltage drop to the ECU while starting and allows the ECU to shut down properly once the user stops the unit. Details about this connection are on page 19 of the installation and maintenance manual. So to sum up, you want to make sure that you consider airflow through the genset. You want to make sure that you're using dedicated fuel lines between the genset and the fuel tank. You want to bleed the air out of the fuel system. You want to make sure that you pick the proper battery and cable sizes for your application and that you connect the ECU home run directly to the battery. By following these simple guidelines, as well as the recommendations in the manuals, you will increase the likelihood of a successful installation and operational performance over a long product life. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on EPS Shop Talks.